Good morning and welcome to People Online. This time we intend to do a series on HR analytics. The scope, however, is restricted to the very basics with an emphasis on applications, particularly those kind of applications that require less resources to run and perhaps can be best described as low hanging fruits. Session 12 Prescriptive Analytics Refining the Training Process Contents In this video, we will be covering What is Prescriptive Analytics? Refining the Training Process and Illustration What is Prescriptive Analytics? Prescriptive Analytics advocates analyzing HR data to acquire greater insight about a problem and then recommending a course of action to resolve or manage that problem. Example could be analysis of training feedback data to come up with measures for improving the training. This video presents how hypothesis testing can be used to prescribe a refinement of the training process. Refining the training process. We see a process diagram over here. On the left, we have the input factors. Basically, the sources of training interventions would be captured here. Then we have in the middle, the process factors, types of training methods, which are being used. And then we have the output factors, training effectiveness scores. Input factors. Input factors could include sources, in-house run by internal faculty. This could be one of the source. Uh, academic institute could be another, industry body, external consultancy, and individual experts. Process factors. The process factors could capture the mode of training. The mode of training could include classroom training, outbound training, on-the-job training, and e-learning. Output factors. The output factors could include all variables that indicate the success of the training. The success typically gets captured by training effectiveness indices. One option could be to use Kirkpatrick's four levels of training effectiveness indicators as given below. Capturing the participant's feeling immediately after the training. The difference in pre and post assessment scores of the participants. Supervisor's feedback on the change in behavior at the workplace after the training. An assessment of productivity improvement that has been brought about by the training. Hypothesis testing. The following tests are popular. When variables are categorical, chi-squared test. When both variables are metric and the sample size is 30 or less, t-test. When both variables are metric and the sample size is more than 30, then z-test. Method. One can proceed to conduct a test of independence to ascertain the nature of relationship between the input variables and output variables. Similarly, tests of independence would have to be conducted to ascertain the relationship between the process and output variables. Depending on the outcome of such tests, suitable recommendations for modifying the training process can be tabled. For example, if low effectiveness scores can be associated with e-learning, then the recommendation may be to drop e-learning till such time we find a better e-learning partner, assuming of course the current services are outsourced. An illustration. 15 executives working in a large corporation underwent 360 degree assessment of their leadership competencies in 2013. Subsequently, they attended a leadership program that was spread over two years and nine months. After the training program concluded, they underwent another round of 360-degree assessment. 
The assessment scores before and after training is given in the next slide. On the basis of this data, can we conclude that the organization should continue to use this leadership program? Let's see the available data. Yes, uh, we can see three columns, executive, uh, assessment score 2013 and assessment score 2016. So uh, the scores for the two years are put next to one another. And uh, we can also see an average of 3.21 for 2013 and uh, 3.36 for 2016. Analysis and conclusion. One needs to conduct a paired t-test to ascertain whether there's a statistically significant difference in the assessment scores before and after the training program. The null hypothesis could be there is no difference in assessment rating before and after the training. Alternate hypothesis would be after training scores are superior. A paired one tail t-test is conducted using MS Excel and it yielded a p-value of 0 0.002. The null hypothesis then gets rejected at 95% level of confidence. So the approximately 5% improvement in scores on an average is statistically significant. The leadership training therefore ought to be continued. Summary. In this video, we have covered what is prescriptive analytics, refining the training process, and an illustration. Thank you for watching. If you could relate to the video, if you found it to be useful, do like and share. Do subscribe to our channel. Press the bell button to stay tuned in for our next video. Until then, goodbye.